Okay, this is Dirichlet's principle, the basic form. We still have a lot to do. You remember how it goes? We have, uh, let me draw them. We have n boxes all the way up to n, and n plus 1 balls. We have n plus 1 balls like that. If we try putting these balls into these boxes, then one box has at least, at least two balls. So that's the most basic form, and there's still a lot to do, a lot for us to do here. Okay, let's take problem one, and we have eight numbers. This is a really cute problem. Eight numbers, and we choose, we choose um, five of them. Now we prove that, want to prove that two will always, always sum to nine. You say, wow, how do I prove that? Well, it's exactly one of those things that seems impossible to prove. It's too general or too strange or, or whatever, but this is exactly the kind of thing that Dirichlet's principle is made for. So let's see how this works. Let's let's put together some boxes. Let's try different ways to make nine. I can have one eighth, and I can have two seven, and I can have three six, and I can have four five. But then in the next one, uh, five four is the same as four five. So really, I have only four boxes. Now look carefully. One two three. Four, Four, five, six, seven, eight. I have exhausted all of the numbers. All of them can be accounted for here. So if I, I try to put five numbers into these boxes, I have four boxes, put five numbers. I, I'm going to have a box with two numbers. And if there's two numbers in this box, let's say here, then 2 plus 7 is going to be 9. Therefore, these two numbers sum to 9. There. That's really, really a beautiful thing. It merits careful study because this type of thing is used in many other contexts. We will look at more. We have a long way to go, even with this most basic form of Dirichlet's principle. There are many, many more problems to do. Okay, let's try to do another one. I think we have time for another one. Problem two. I have a set of elements A1, A2, up to AN. I have N of them now. Show that show that there exists a subset, call it A, that such that the sum, the sum of the elements of A are divisible by N. Now this is a very interesting problem. Uh, again, it seems impossible to prove, you say. How am I going to do this? I, I, I have no clue, you know. But again, remember what I said. Dirichlet's principle is the kind of thing you use when you want to prove that something exists about collections or sets or something like that, finite collection, finite set. You want to prove that some situation exists or some object exists. In this case, we want to prove some object exists, a subset that has certain properties. Okay, so here's how we do it. Um, let's take S1 as A1 and S2. We'll take sums, like these kind of sums like this, A1 plus A2 plus A3, and so on and so on up to Sn. It's the sum of all of them. Okay, like that. See? And now we make some boxes. Now we, we're talking about division by n. So let's see. Division by n 
Division by n involves remainders. Okay, division by n. What remainders? What remainders are possible? 0, 1, 2, all the way up to n minus 1. So let's put these in boxes. 0, 1, 2, all the way to remainder n minus 1. Now, if I have an element in here, then I'm finished. Okay, if I have an S in here, then then this S, let's call it S J, uh, or yeah, let's call it S J. This is A1 plus A2 plus all the way up to A J, and this is congruent to zero mod N. And if that's the case, if that's the case, then um, we're finished. So this is case one. So this is my subset. My subset A is A1, A2, up to AJ. It, it exists. If I have an element in here, then I have my subset. That's it. This subset, sum of the elements, is divisible by n. Now case two is I don't have anything in that little box. Okay, in case two. Case two I don't have anything, so let me write case 2 here. Case 2, there's nothing in this little box, in the first one, in the zero box, nothing in there. Okay, now what? Well, now I've got to pack n sums in n minus 1 boxes. Now by Dirichlet's principle, well, what do you think is going to happen here? Obviously, one box somewhere is going to have two sums in it. So, therefore, one box has at least two sums. Okay. Which sums? Let's call them, call them SJ. Call them... Let's try to make the... Make it look better. Okay, let's call them S I and S J. Okay, sorry. So both of these uh, have the same remainder here. I show you. This is remainder R. This is S I. This is S J. It's in there. Both have remainder R. Okay. So let's go up here and continue the logic. So I have my box. Inside my box, I have SJ and I have SI, yeah, and the remainder is R. And so, again, like we saw before, and another problem, I can subtract these two. SI minus SJ is equal to R minus R, and that's congruent to 0 mod N. And so, therefore, N divides SI minus SJ. Okay. So we know our subset exists. Let's construct. Let's construct it. What, what is A now? Okay, it's something to do with this. We know it exists, but let's now try to be more explicit. What is A? Well, let's take i bigger than j, so as to make this sum kind of easy to work with. It doesn't matter one or the other. You can always rearrange it. If you take SI minus SJ, that's congruent to 0 mod N. If you take the other way around, it, it is also congruent to 0 mod N, so it doesn't matter. So let's, let's do this. SI minus SJ, this is A1 plus A2 plus dot 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 AI minus A1 minus A2 minus dot 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 all the way up to minus AJ. So, in other words, I'm cutting out all these elements here like this, all the way up to AJ. AJ is gone. AJ gone. So I have AJ plus 1 plus AJ plus 2 plus da, 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 all the way up to AI. And I know that this sum, this sum is divisible. This is divisible by n. 
Okay, finally, let's construct A. Easy to construct from this. Okay, watch how it goes. Very easy. I show you. A i plus 1, j plus 1, sorry. A j plus 2 up to a i, where i bigger than j. There we go. We did it. We proved that this set exists, even though we don't know anything about these numbers. We don't know anything about it. We know that this set exists, and this set, uh, the sum is divisible by n, even though we don't no clue what these numbers may be. Totally amazing, I think. Uh, this should give you a, a good idea of how Dirichlet principle is used, and you can imagine also clearly why students have a hard time understanding it, because it is unlike anything they're, they're, they've seen before. Okay, if you like this, click like, subscribe. More Dirichlet Principle is coming up soon.